Hey guys, welcome to Coding Simplified. And today our problem is about Fibonacci number or Fibonacci series. So first of all, let's see what is Fibonacci number. So Fibonacci series is a series where the particular number is sum of previous two numbers, right? For example, this is a Fibonacci series. So you can see that two is sum of one plus one. Now three is sum of one plus two. Five is sum of two plus three. Then 3 plus 5, 8, then 8 plus 5, 13, and 13 plus 1, 13 plus 8, 21, and go on, right? So nowadays, uh, either you can have a Fibonacci series like this, or you can have a Fibonacci series like this, where you start from 0, and here you start from 1, right? So uh, generally what, what people ask is that, what is the Fibonacci number, or what is the n nth number in the series? So that is our problem that we need to find out. For example, here, like in this series, what is the fifth number? So I will say the fifth number is, so this is one, two, second, three, four, five. So my number is five. So this is known as F0. You can say this is F0 or the zeroth one. But this is first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one, right? So what is the seventh Fibonacci number? That is 13, right? So that we need to find out. So as you have also seen the logic, so lo logic is very simple that we need to add the previous two numbers and then we'll get our number, right? So the point is, if you want to get the previous two numbers, then again, you need to go to back. Then again, you need to go to back, right? So now let's see how to do in coding. So here I have this method get Fibonacci number and here I will pass the number which I want to retrieve. So what I am doing basically you will start from the 0 or 1 right. So I am saying that if n is less than equals to 1 then return n. It means if you are asking f0 so it will get 0. If it will ask f1 so again it will return means 1 but if you but if if number is greater than 1 it means let's say 2 so this is not less than 1 it means it will go again and recursively will call recursively will call the n minus 1 plus n minus 2 so again here it will call if it is 2 so it will call f1 and f0 so f0 is 0 and f1 is 1 so that will solve my problem so simply what we are doing if n is less than 1 then return n means if n is 0 then 0 if n is 1 then 1 else recursively call n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and that will solve the problem so let's see if we want to calculate the 3 what is third number so okay so what will do it will go here it will say n is 3 so first it will call n 2 now n is 2 so now it will call n minus 1 which is f1 so it will say 1 so return 1 then it will call 0 so it n is 0 now it will return 0 so cumulatively it will return f2 will return now and then it will call f1 so f1 will call this so now it will add some and it will return you 2 right so this was my answer third this is the third number right now let's say if you are calling the fifth number so here pass the f here pass the four if you want to calculate the fifth number and then similarly if you run the program this will return you five which is correct now let's say if you want to calculate seventh number run the program and it will return 13 which is correct right so you have seen uh, what we are doing basically recursively we are calling the n minus 1 and n minus 2th number means basically which are the previous two numbers and then we are adding them so again uh, they will go to back again they will go to back and they will start from the root one right so that's it guys we have seen how to get the Fibonacci number using a recursion and we can optimize this problem using dynamic programming so to avoid that problem to avoid the overlapping we'll use a dynamic programming where we'll use the top to bottom and memoize technique right 
so you can see my other series uh, of the dynamic programming where i have solved this problem so, but for this tutorial uh, this is enough and uh, and guys if you have liked the video then please like it and please subscribe the channel for more such problems thank you